So you're wondering if Pittsburgh is a good place to live. Well, in this video, we're going to go over the key factors of Pittsburgh's livability. If it's a good place for young professionals, singles, retirees, or to raise a family. And also towards the end, what makes Pittsburgh not such a great place? If this is the information you want, we're going after it right now. Hey guys, it's Riley Madden with EXP Realty right here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. If this is your first time to this channel and you want to learn everything about working, eating, sleeping, living, playing, all right here in Pittsburgh, start by tapping that subscribe button and click that little bell so you're notified every time we come out with a new video. We get so many reach outs from people moving and relocating here and we absolutely love it. If you are even thinking about moving to the Pittsburgh area, make sure you start by giving us a call shooting us a text, sending us an email, DMing us on social media, however you want to get a hold of us, we've got your back when making a move to Pittsburgh. So is Pittsburgh a really good place to live? Well, for starters, we have a great A rating on niche.com as well as a whopping 4.5 stars. We're constantly being ranked as one of America's most livable cities. We were recently just ranked number 30 out of 228 different cities for best places to live in America. Now there are many benefits of living in Pittsburgh, such as our lower cost of living, our good growth rate of younger residents, and anything from art and music all the way to some of the best sports teams in the country, such as the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Pittsburgh Steelers. We're a city that's made up of rivers, hills, a ton of parks, high education, and amazing medical facilities. So Pittsburgh ranks at the top of quality of life around the US and the world, Living here really offers its residents a more urban suburban mix feel. So you have a ton of different restaurants, coffee shops, bars, and then you have things such as art galleries, museums, a ton of parks. It gives it a great variety of things to do where you never get bored. We have a ton of high learning institutions such as Carnegie Mellon and Duquesne, but our colleges aren't the only thing that's great. Our public schools are above average and so are our private schools and this is going to be for elementary and high school. So if you are moving here with kiddos, we have great school options for them no matter if you're in the suburbs or inner city. Our median home value here is only around $125,000 so this is going to be well below the national average which people are so surprised when they come here and realize how much they could get in certain neighborhoods for such a low cost. So our average rent here is around $950. If you're coming from somewhere like New York City, you're probably paying like over two grand for something that's $900 here. We do have a ton of different options for rentals. We have apartment buildings, condos, and lofts. They all offer a ton of great amenities as well as a ton of triplexes, duplexes, and just residential homes rented out by landlords. 53% of our residents here rent while 47% own, so it is pretty even in that sense. We are ranked the number 23rd best place in America to buy a house out of 228 different cities, and our real estate market here is one of the least competitive for buyers. We have many popular neighborhoods here, including Lively Shadyside, Residential Scroll Hill, Up and Coming East Liberty, and Trendy Lawrenceville. And you can't forget about the amazing views on Mount Washington. The Strip District is also a really cool place. It offers more industrial vibes with amazing, amazing food. We're also home to many wealthier suburbs such as Mount Lebanon, Sewickley, Allison Park, Franklin Park, Upper St. Clair, and Murraysville. And then you have some other great neighborhoods such as Highland Park, Point Breeze, and Bloomfield. Now we are home to over 90 different neighborhoods here and the cool thing about it is they all have their own unique areas to explore. So we never lost that sense of community in places such as Bloomfield, you have your Little Italy, you have Polish Hill, and there's just so many hidden gems throughout all of these different neighborhoods that you will never get sick of going to a new one and trying a new thing. People are often surprised how familiar and warm each of these neighborhoods feel. It really feels like that strong, strong sense of community in a big city. It's amazing. No other place is like it. Some would say downtown is our most exciting neighborhood. 
Just in the past 10 years, they have invested $1.9 billion into improving the neighborhood. And in return, we have added over 3,700 new residents recently, and this is gonna be your empty nesters, families, and young professionals. It is going to be our most walkable neighborhood in the city. Every month, there is hundreds of art, cultural, and shopping events. Downtown, you're gonna see some skyscrapers, the PPG hockey arena, and as well as the Fort Pitt Museum. And people typically say the food downtown is a mix of your old school steakhouses with the new upcoming trendy chef-driven restaurants. Moving on to crime and safety, we are rated a C from niche.com. Our violent crimes such as assault, murder, rape, and robbery are all along the lines of the national averages. You could check those numbers out right on niche.com. And then you have our property crimes such as burglary and motor vehicle theft being right along the national averages as well. As with any other city, there's crime here of course. Some areas are more affluent than others, but you always wanna make sure no matter what city you are moving to is to be careful and always know your surroundings. We are rated as one of America's most safest cities and we do have a lower population than most of the larger cities, which does give us an advantage because less people, less crime. Like any other US city, you're going to have your good and your bad. Overall, Pittsburgh is a very enjoyable, welcoming, and friendly place with a ton of different parks, bike trails, and it's very walkable. We are a very up-and-coming city, so most of our bad neighborhoods are getting revamped really quickly, which is great that Pittsburgh's so on top of that. We've had neighborhoods such as like Lawrenceville. It wasn't the best in the past, but now they're calling it the Brooklyn of Pittsburgh. It is full with a bustling business district, tons of things to do, and that is the spot for the millennials. There is crime everywhere, so no matter where you're moving, make sure to do your research and talk to a real estate professional to best find out the neighborhoods that fit your lifestyle. Now, working in Pittsburgh was graded a B from niche.com. Our annual household income is around $48,000. We have had a tremendous rise in job opportunities, making Pittsburgh a great place that is attractive for different families and young professionals. Our quality of life here continues to improve with new industries that really make Pittsburgh home, high tech being one of them. We have Google, Uber, Amazon, Facebook, all in the area, which has made a big change in the city. Our average commute time to work is around 27 minutes. If you're working downtown, there are so many different options for living where you could probably work anywhere around and still be around the same average commute time. Now, if you are driving to work yourself, you may want to try to avoid the parkway on certain times just because of that tunnel traffic. So you're going to have the cars stopping just because of these tunnels and that's going to cause cars to stop for miles and it could mess with your commute time. The good thing is we have many back roads and different ways to maneuver around the city, so it's easy to skip the parkway. It might just add about five minutes to your route, which is nothing compared to how long you're going to be sitting in that traffic. And if you are not driving, we do have the Port Authority, which includes our bus and light rail system. The bus system services downtown and the suburbs of Allegheny County. And then our light rail system, or the T, has three different points from the North Shore, downtown, and the South Suburbs. We also have Uber and Lyft here, which are relatively cheap if you don't want to ride the bus and you do not have a car. We have bike rentals available through our city proper, where you could pay by the hour and return it to a different bike station. A lot of people do commute by bike but the problem is, is our winters are pretty brutal, so you might wanna consider Uber and lifting for the majority of the winter if you're not used to biking in the freezing cold. We also have Scoobies and electric scooters available. So Scoobies are really cool. They're like a little motorcycle, I would say, but it's really like an electric scooter. You get an app, you connect it, and you could pay by hour on that as well. They're really safe, they give you a helmet, and it's a really good system. And if Scoobies aren't your thing, our electric scooters work well too. And then you have Zipcar in the area as well, so you could rent a car for the hour, for the day, whatever you need to do. But overall, it's a very walkable place, so if you're going somewhere like the pharmacy or the grocery store, you most likely could walk there. And if you're moving to the area but looking to travel a little bit, we do have commercial flights in our Pittsburgh International Airport. 
and we do have charter flights available for La Trobe and our Allegheny County Airport. In downtown, we have a bus terminal station as well as a train station. So tons of ways to transport throughout the city. Now let's get into if Pittsburgh is the right place for you. If you are a young professional, Pittsburgh pretty much has everything for you to explore, play, and learn here. With our high learning institutions in the area, such as Carnegie Mellon, Pitt, and Duquesne, this is what brings in thousands of students from all over the country and the world. And many of these graduates do choose to remain in Pittsburgh because of our many job opportunities and our friendly environment. A home services firm actually conducted research and rated Pittsburgh the best place to move after graduating college. We are driven by high tech, robotics, nuclear engineering, biomedical engineering, tourism, education, finance, and service industries. I do know a lot of people here who do food blogging. There are a ton of different restaurants. I mean, the largest variety you're going to see. So with platforms such as Instagram, TikTok, and just your normal website blog, people find a lot of success with food blogging or even just blogging about the Pittsburgh city. It is a great place to be a blogger just because of the variety of different things to do and then the inspiration you get being in this historical city. It is very easy to find networking events here, whether it be online, social media, following a Pittsburgh website, or post it up at your local coffee shop. We also have many great environments to do your work. If you have some computer work, I personally like to go to the parks, do it there, coffee shops, or even the libraries and bookstores we have. And then we have a ton of new breweries popping up all over the city that are offering social events and gatherings. These events are both indoor and outdoor, so no matter what the weather is, you're still going to be networking. I find it very easy to communicate, meet new people, just because they're very open-minded, friendly people, and it's great to make those connections with other young adults. Now, many of these breweries also offer amazing food menus or rotating food truck schedules, so you could get a bite to eat, sip on a brew, and network with other young adults. Some of the popular breweries include Penn Brewery, Southern Tier, and 11th Hour. Rocket Homes actually rated us on the 10 best cities to be a young professional. I personally see that advantage because of the large amount of young people here, the good cost of living, and the friendly environment with parks, walkability, and bike trails. It's very easy to bump into others. We do have many cool coffee shops here to work at. I personally like to work at some, like Inkwell in Lawrenceville. They make amazing drinks and the atmosphere is amazing but we are ranked one of the best cities for coffee lovers in America, so we have hundreds and hundreds of different coffee shops. We also have new co-working spaces coming to Shadyside and the waterfront. So these are going to be for entrepreneurs, freelancers, or someone just looking for an office space or to do work. I believe starting out, it's around $75 a month, and it offers places for events, places for meeting rooms, office space, even some movie screening, and some arcade fun. This is a new company that is coming to Pittsburgh, so the CEO recently said that they chose Pittsburgh as their next location, primarily due to our many great neighborhoods and our strong local community. And aside from our networking events, just bumping into someone in the city, isn't intimidating at all like it could be in the larger cities. People are often very surprised with our sense of community here, where everybody feels like your neighbor. It's not weird to just say hi and talk to different people. Now moving on to the singles. In 2017, we actually ranked among the 20 best cities for singles to live in. This is with economics, recreation, and dating opportunities all taken into consideration. The fun and recreation looked at the amount of nightlife options, the restaurants, bars, and coffee shops, as well as the weather and safety. While the dating opportunities were determined by the share of the single population, the single gender balance, the online dating opportunities, as well as the most active Tinder users. Now, pretty much every area here, such as Oakland, Shadyside, Squirrel Hill, Lawrenceville, are swarming with people in their 20s and 30s. These are going to be mainly young professionals, students, and some entrepreneurs. 
Also areas such as the Strip District, Mount Washington, East Liberty, and Bloomfield. Honestly, the majority of our neighborhoods are full of millennials. And trust me, we have many, many bars to meet and mingle with the singles. According to a healthy framework, the five best bars for singles are Hemingway Cafe, Grapparia, Mike's Beer Bar, Hidden Harbor, and Spill. And then you have East Carson Street on Southside, which is about 20 blocks of just bars, restaurants, and other little hidden gems in between. I mean, this is definitely the place for your crazy night out. If you just want to have a fun night, there are a ton of different clubs and bars here where it gets crazy. If you're walking in Southside on like a Friday or Saturday night, you even do see some fights and cops around. So I would avoid that area if you aren't looking to party. And if you do want to do things on your own, such as going to museums, bars, restaurants, and coffee shops, that is so fun and welcoming here. It's a small enough city where you don't feel intimidated going somewhere alone. The workers here are accommodating and friendly and so is everyone else. It's the perfect place to just explore the city by yourself. Since there are many things to do and explore here, it's really ideal for singles. If you just want to explore a city by yourself, Pittsburgh again is small enough where you could do that and be safe. And you do have our dating apps here if you're looking into online dating. So you have Tinder and Hinge, which are full of active users, young professionals, young adults, and students. If you're not single and you're looking to start a family here, you're actually going to be surprised. Despite our nightlife and our opportunities for singles, Pittsburgh is an amazing place to raise a family. So starting off, we are one of the country's blue zones. So a National Geographic guy actually studied the world's longest living places and longevity hotspots, and Pittsburgh is one of them. It's not that we have better discipline or responsibility here. Pittsburgh is simply a place that makes making healthier choices easier or just unavoidable. It is all about supporting habits that stretch out your lifespan so that you could live long, healthy lives with your family. Now, when you could walk to do your errands, you're more likely to be more active than being able to just jump in the car and drive. Pittsburgh's a very walkable place. Walk to get your groceries, jump on a bike. It's very easy to make good choices here. What else helps is our smart city design, our bike lanes, our affordable housing, our good healthcare, social opportunities, and an economy that sees older workers, entrepreneurs, and retirees as an asset. Living in a city like Pittsburgh, we have plenty of neighborhood groups, which actually provides a buffer against loneliness, where loneliness could shave some years off of your life. With healthcare being our newest economic driver, adding things like culture, downtown parks and trails, and really great education at all ages, you could no wonder why your kiddos would love it here. We do actually have an age-friendly Greater Pittsburgh Action Plan that focuses on tech, transportation, and creative ideas for volunteering. Our urban areas here definitely do support the longevity of our lifespan. You could access so much so easily, and Pittsburgh is the third most livable city in the U.S. and 34th worldwide, according to a global research study. So it's very important to have them parks for the kiddos, to have that recreation, to have the different neighborhood groups. Along with our variety of things to do and the overall safety of the city, we have a ton of nature, green places, and places to explore. We have a huge county park system that offers parks and recreation, inner city and outer city. We have many different bodies of water here, so if the kiddos like to boat, if they like to jet ski, or just walking around and even learning the history of the point is an awesome thing for the kids to do. We get many of our production companies from New York City along with a ton of different local theater shows. We have things such as the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra, the Ballet Theater, and the National Aviary. We also have Phipps Conservatory and different historical things such as the Andy Warhol Museum, the Children's Museum, the Science Center, and the Heinz Center. Some of our larger suburbs such as Cranberry Township, Franklin Park, Murraysville, McCandles, Upper St. Clair, Mount Lebanon, they are all great places to raise a family. 
We do have some great suburbs that aren't heard of as much, but are great places with great schools, such as Jefferson Hills, North Huntington, and Plum. Some of our top public schools here include Pittsburgh Science and Technology Academy, Alderdice High School, Barack Obama High School, Pittsburgh Kappa, our City Charter High School, and our Environmental Charter School. Some top private schools near Pittsburgh include Shadyside Academy, Central Catholic, Winchester Thurston School, Sewickley Academy, and the Ellis School located in Shadyside. We actually have 125 public elementary, middle, and high schools in addition to our 250 public schools. 88 of these schools are recognized on U.S. News and World Reports for best high school rankings. We also have our top rated Western PA school for the deaf and the blind. Us being ranked a good place to raise a family is credited towards our wonderful cultural offerings, our great sports teams, our attractive physical surroundings, numerous parks, ethnic diversity, public transportation, medical facilities, and friendly locals. The people of Pittsburgh are truly second to none. Our love for this city runs deep. These are real, hardworking, earnest people that aren't going to put on a fake show for you. They tell it how it is, and they're very kind, real, and friendly about it. Where else in a large city are you able to find a great family environment? very clean, very welcoming, and affordable. It's very easy to get involved in the community, different volunteering events, and just making friends. Maybe you're not looking to start a family here. Maybe you're looking to call it home as a retiree. Well, I'm sure you're not surprised with our many other rankings here. We are actually ranked one of the best cities to retire in the country. With our low crime levels, our affordable housing, and our top-notch medical facilities, you can only imagine why it's a great place to retire. We have access to many great retirement homes here as well, including the Pines of Mount Lebanon, Sunrise of Upper St. Clair, Ashbury Heights, Friendship Village of South Hills, and Longwood at Oakmont, just to name a few. Some other aspects that help with retiring in Pittsburgh is going to be our amount of green spaces. There's always going to be something you could do outside, which is very nice. It's very good to get them steps in. Whether it's biking, hiking, walking, anything is possible in Pittsburgh. Our medical facilities are second to none. We have great, great health care in Satellite offices popping up absolutely everywhere, so it's very easy to get to your doctors or wherever you need to go because there are so many here. Many of our suburbs are very quiet, open, so if that's what you like, you will enjoy the suburbs more. If you want to go into the city and get the beautiful views, you might like Mount Washington or different residential city areas such as Squirrel Hill and Shadyside. Another amazing thing about Pittsburgh is we are an incredibly central location. We have many wineries nearby. We have, we're like surrounded by the country. So there are a ton of things to do out that way, such as the wineries in Middlesburg, Virginia. We have Erie, which has a beach about two hours away. Not ocean water whatsoever, it's lake water, Lake Erie, but there are amazing things to do in Erie, whether water activities, getting a place for the night, or exploring the wineries and the restaurants. Erie is a really great place to visit. Our drive to Washington, D.C. is only about four hours, Chicago, eight hours, and Philly, five hours. So Pittsburgh's located in an amazing central location for traveling and exploring. We have amazing food to eat, amazing views here, amazing coffee, a boating and water scene, good cost of living, many movie theaters, a Benidorm, historic hotels to check out, festivals, many large, quiet suburban areas, central grocery stores, everything is very nearby, and for my ladies and men, we do have some great spas here too. Now, aside from all of the positives in Pittsburgh, of course, there are some factors that make it not so great. Now to start, State Impact reported data in 2019 that gave our air here a rating F from the American Lung Association. 
So that definitely could be scary. The pollution is a scary thing, bad air quality, but it is getting better and improving on the bright side. Our biggest sources of air pollution in Pittsburgh are going to be from our cars, our power plants, and our heavy industry of U.S. steel. Although many improvements have been made in prior years to our air quality, it is still some of the worst in the country. You do want to keep in mind that this data from 2019 does not include the cleaner air that is being brought because of everyone being inside and the lockdowns. So hopefully these numbers and ratings will only get better and better as time goes on. And even prior to the pandemic, we have been showing improvement in our air quality, such as every other aspect of Pittsburgh. We're continuously getting better since we are an up and coming city. Another reason you might not be so fond of living in Pittsburgh is our roads. Our roads are some of the most confusing in the country and some of them are in bad shape where we have steep brick roads, we have potholes, and just different things that make driving not so desirable in the city. Taking a wrong exit or turn in the city could be very problematic and add a ton of time to your travels and could just overall be annoying. We have over 446 different bridges. We have a ton of different tunnels that often cause tunnel traffic. And we do have a lot of merging lanes and drivers that are going fast. It can be scary to merge, especially whenever it's a merging lane going into a tunnel and you have about 10 seconds to do so. So if driving is something that scares you and you absolutely cannot drive in the city or not easily navigate yourself around, Pittsburgh might not be the best option for you. Now, another negative to living in Pittsburgh is although we do have many sources of public transportation, I've heard that it could need some serious help. So these major routes in and out of the city are restricted to two lane highways. So there is often a lot of hold up and traffic, so you could be sitting on your route way longer than expected. So the T basically connects the richest suburbs in the south to downtown. So that's problematic because they forget about the east and the large population there who may need the transportation even more. I have also heard our buses here are constantly under threat of route cutting and reduced service. Now that could be scary if you're used to taking the bus and that's your one source of transportation and it gets cut off or changed. You definitely need something reliable, although the city has been working hard to make the transportation better. Like I said, up and coming city, we're getting better, but we do have some points that we're struggling with and transportation could be one of them. Now, some say our bike lanes are too small. They don't connect to enough places and some of these bike lanes you'll be sharing with the road so they won't have the meters up that are actually protecting you. So you're going to be sharing the bike lanes with the drivers, which can be problematic as well. And if you do not like snow, we have snow here. We have cold winters, we have shorter summers, and not the most desirable weather, although our falls are absolutely beautiful. So if you're someone that hates the cold, doesn't want to see any snow, Pittsburgh might not be your option. We get an average of 27 inches per winter season, so if you do not like snow, you might not like Pittsburgh. If there's anything else you would like me to talk about, whether it's digging deeper into the young professional or single scene, or retirees, or even some more cons of living in Pittsburgh, make sure you leave me a comment and we'll get those videos shot for you. And remember, if you're thinking about relocating to Pittsburgh, make sure you start by giving us a call, shooting us a text, sending us an email, DMing us on social media. However you want to get a hold of us, we've always got your back when making a move to Pittsburgh. Now feel free to watch all of our other videos explaining the beautiful city of Pittsburgh. And until the next video, we'll see ya.